Hey, Jessica. Hey, you ready? Hi, you ready to show Happy Hyde Park how to use Google Meet? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Hey, Hyde Park, um, we have got some uh, tips for you that Jessica's going to be editing and sharing with you. Um, we're using Google Meet, and I want to show you first how to access it. So if you just go into Google and click on your waffle, right down here is Google Meet, and can I can we, launch it directly from here. Can you show your screen? Thanks. Womp womp. There we go. <laughs> and I'm not editing that out, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. No problem. All right. Let me get a fresh tab. OK. So um, we're going to go over some do's and don'ts in Google Meet. But first, got to show you how to access it. In your waffle, you can just scroll down, and you're going to look for the little camera for Google Meet and launch that. Now you can start a meeting right from the screen. You can click on join or start a meeting. A nice feature is you can give it a nickname. So I like to give mine my name. And then anybody in the organization and CPS, if I share that with them, they can join now using my name. Now, the first thing that pops up is all of this information. You can copy that join information. You are gonna see that when you copy that and paste it, it kind of appears in this clump. And I think it's easier to read like this. So I usually go through and click at the end of this to make it a hyperlink, give it some space. I like the phone number on its own line and I like the pin on a line by itself. So that's just a quick little tip, but you will just be able to copy that joining info right there. You don't have to do that. You can also add people directly from here. So if you have their name or email, you can invite them right from here as well. So if I wanted to invite Jessica to join this, I can type her in and send the invite. She just got that in her email. All right, let's look back at some of the features. Um, we wanna make sure first that classes, uh, teachers or people moderating the meeting understand to tell their users how to mute and unmute. So if I go into this meeting, oops, and I've got Jessica in here, if she's got like a dog in the background or a TV on and she's disrupting the meeting, I could mute her. But if she doesn't know how to unmute herself, then she's going to be stuck in the meeting saying, you can't hear me, I can't, you'll just get this bad feedback. So Jessica, um, I'm gonna mute you and then you're gonna unmute yourself. So to unmute and mute. So I'm gonna mute Jessica cause she's being too loud. And now, Jessica, you can go in and unmute yourself. Okay. You can can see you the, yep. And you, what you saw was that she had a little mute icon right by her. Also, in this column, it shows me who's muted and unmuted. So I can see at a glance that Jessica's unmuted. So you can also just remind your participants to mute themselves. And that usually works pretty well. But every now and then, somebody has been distracted, and you've got to go in and mute them. All right. Muting and unmuting yourself is a first tip to learn. Jessica, you want to go ahead and unmute? Yep. Can you hear me now? I can. <laughs> All right. The next thing we're going to look at is um, muting your camera. Not everybody wants to be on screen. So if you mute, you'll see that as you keep talking, this is still indicating to the viewer that I'm speaking. Uh, if you don't have a profile picture, it'll just be your name initial. So I can mute my video right here. It also shows me who in the meeting is muted. Whoops. Go back to Jessica. Jessica, do you want to mute, mute your video? Yep. All right. And I can just see right here that her picture is still there. Where I look much better than I do yep. right now. <laughs> <laughs> you look fabulous, darling. So this is a good tip, though, for students who maybe don't want to be on camera as well. They can um, mute. So that's a good thing to show the kids how to mute the camera um, and just be, you know, watching and participating through voice and maybe not through the camera. Yep. So if students were on there, like if a parent got them on there or um, if they're at the right age or the 
requirements change for sure. Just anybody, um, you know, in the morning, first thing, my first meeting, I look a hot mess and I don't want my camera on. <laughs> All right, let's look at, look back at the list. Um, it is, there's a few more things and Jessica will share a more uh, detailed version of this with you or a cleaned up Jessica version of this. But we recommend that you don't use this platform for lecture or one-sided communication. This is truly for meeting with groups or individuals. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, some hand signals. Jessica, do you want to share some hand signals with everybody? Show Absolutely. some of the ones that you learned. So a good thing when you have your um, users on there in the meeting, you want to make sure that you sort of set norms for how to communicate. Um, and so telling uh, students, let's see, I'm sorry, uh, users to put their hand in front of their face if they would like to speak. So that way they can notify everyone in the meeting that um, they would like to have a turn. And then also using their hand by their ear like this will let everyone in the meeting know that they're having trouble hearing. Um, so maybe they need to unmute or um, cancel out any background noise. Yeah, that's a great tip. Another one um, that we want to do if we're trying to get just agreement, um, very often you depends on your layout, you're either going to have everybody in a tile window in front of you, or you might have them down a panel down the side, but teach them to do a thumbs up if they agree, because um, that way not everybody needs to verbally say anything or unmute every time you want to say, do we get that? Are we good to move on? Just give a thumbs up. So uh, establishing some hand signals, and I'm sure Jessica and you guys will come up with other great ideas. Um, another thing that I just want to forewarn before we go through the rest of the um, the features of this tool is just don't post your links on public websites. We don't want others from outside joining um, and we don't want uh, recordings shared publicly either later. And Jessica will work more with you on that, right? Yes. Okay, so I showed you the meeting details of how to share your information. Let me go back to just presenting my screen. All right, here's my meeting details for joining. We covered already muting the microphone, muting the video camera. Um, this is a nice feature, closed captioning. And it's gonna add captions on my side as well as the other participants. So Jessica, you wanna say something so we can show back and forth? Yeah, so this feature is really great for um, sort of recording the conversation and um, helping keep a record of uh, who's speaking and, and what's being uh, gone over in the meeting. Yeah, and so if you are recording your session, which I'm gonna share now, you can present your screen. I'm gonna hop into this other meeting to show it. Um, if you were on a meeting, yes, I know I'm recording, I'm presenting. Uh, if I wanted to present my screen, you select your entire screen or a window. I always do your entire screen. Now I have multiple screens at my desk, but even if you don't, you'll have to select the screen you want, and then you click share and then it goes into this window of you are presenting your screen. And then this is what you get as a presenter. And then so when you hop to these other tabs, you're showing people what's on the other tabs. All right, Jessica, you catch all that? Yeah, that's great for, you wanna make sure that you do have your tabs so that you can flip through your tabs. Um, if you do tab, then you they won't be able to see your other tabs if you switch tabs. That's absolutely right. Yeah, they won't be able to see the other tabs. So you want to keep in mind as you hop over. Um, I just did it to you at the beginning of this call where I forgot to hit share screen. And so as I'm tabbing around, the user can't see what I'm doing. So even when you're doing a think aloud, like you're thinking to yourself, oh, let me Google search this. It wouldn't hurt to throw up your share screen so that people can kind of follow your thinking while you're going. All right, so that's share screen. And then up here, um, this is where I started recording. And so I don't recall if I was sharing screen or not, but it's just a quick start. I'll show it in this one so that, yes, I know. Google is very good at warning you of things. Yes, I know. Oh my. Okay. So normally you would not have two meetings going at once, so just ignore this. I don't, I don't know really what's going on here. Keeps hopping back. All right, we'll just do it from here. I was gonna show start recording. It just starts recording and what it does is pop up a nice little reminder to you to make sure all participants understand they're being in, uh, recorded in a meeting. So that's gonna be especially important since all of our conversations are going on in the privacy of people's homes. 
that might be a time when they want to stop sharing their um, their video or mute themselves. Just make sure you're warning people that you're recording them. Right. When you stop the recording, what I really like about this is that it automatically sends you an email. Oh, well, not that email, sorry. Okay, I had the I had the email queued up and it's gone now, Jessica. Uh. Okay, well, it does automatically send an email to your Google Drive and it takes you into this folder. This folder is already made for you. You have nothing to do. Uh, it's called Meet Recordings. When you first click in there and you start saving these, it looks like garbled junk. But actually, if you look carefully at this title, it matches the meeting. I'm going to end this meeting. We don't need this anymore. It matches the meeting number. So if you look at the meeting, the join details, this code here is how it's saved in here. So you can start to kind of read the codes. And then if you know which meeting it was, you can always just rename it here. But this is where it drops the file. It'll appear in your Google Drive just like this. And if you need more help with what to do with that video, Jessica or myself can help you out with that. All right, Jessica? Yeah. We can go over how the different ways that you can share. Because I know some of you are using Google Drive. Some of you are using YouTube. And some of you are using um, Schoology. So we can, we can talk about how to um, share those out when you're finished. Yep. I'm going to turn off captioning just for the rest of this. Um, Okay, we talked about recordings and where to access them. One thing I like, if there were more of us on the call right now, you would see a big difference. So if you guys get together in a group or uh, in a larger group, I really like this tiled view better. And I don't have a way to really demonstrate this for you. But just keep this in mind that, let me hop back and give directions. In the three-dot menu, if the view of this is bothering you, um, some people have had a hard time adapting to how it flashes between whoever's speaking when they're talking. And especially when you are in a group with multiple people and somebody coughs or over talks it'll flash and it can be a little bit disorienting so you can go to change layout and I really like tiled best that works for me because it puts every user in an equal size tile and when I'm in a group meeting and I'm talking to people and I can see all their faces equally for me it, it's a little bit more of a more realistic experience there is also though you can have the sidebar where everybody is off to the side it's kind of self-explanatory Spotlight, I believe, is the default, and that's when whoever's talking is the one who's on the screen, and then um, you'd have to click here to look at the participants if you wanted to see them. The other piece is the chat. Um, this is a really important tool to use. If I'm working with Jessica and I had this document and I wanted to share it to her during the meeting, you just grab the link. If I use the chat feature, I can quickly say, here's the link. So you can see the different ways you could use this um, with students and parents. You can add a link right here. Another way that was really helpful for me to use this chat feature yesterday, when I had a large group discussion going, there were multiple people who wanted to ask a question and the chat feed sort of became my cue for me answering questions. So Jessica, do you have anything to add with using chat in meetings? Yeah, it's so much easier for the kids to follow if uh, I mean, sorry, for the users to follow if they are entering their questions in the chat feature, um, rather than um, trying to all talk at the same time. So introducing that chat feature as a way for them to um, ask questions, and then you can get to those questions the same way. You yeah, Wait. I'm so sorry. They started mowing the lawn outside my house. Is this <laughs> Is it going to interfere with the rest of our recording? No. Okay. All right. And if it's awful later, we can re-record. What yeah. I'm going to jump to next, um, because I feel like we've covered most of the features. Uh, we looked at the screen share. I did share how to do that. Didn't I, Jessica? Yes. Okay, good. So screen share. One thing that's important is if somebody else is sharing their screen to ask them to stop presenting and then somebody else go ahead and share their screen. Um, and then you may be wondering if you're watching this recording what this is all about. Jessica, do you want to share a little bit about what that's for? So I've talked to you a little bit. I've talked to some of you a little bit about this. Um, I'm going to mute myself. Back. You all have asked me about. Go ahead. You all have asked me about dot cams and how to um, replicate a dot cam type system at home. This is the best we could come up with right now. I'll keep looking for other ideas, but this is a soup can hack. Um, and so what we've done is we've stacked some soup cans 
And then in between like soup can number two and soup can number three, we've got the cell phone <laughs> suspended in midair over the paper. And so then you can use that as a dot cam. Um, you just basically share the meeting with yourself and then join in via your cell phone and then put your cell phone up on some soup cans and then you've got a makeshift dot cam. Um, a good pointer with this is to make sure that you're writing with a Sharpie and not a pencil or a pen. It's very difficult to um, see the uh, pen or pencil on the paper. So if Rosemary, if you want to demonstrate that for them so they can see the difference. Rosemary, you're muted right now. All right, the lawnmower guy is not too close to my window. So if it gets bad, tell me and I'll just mute. Um, but what I was going to say is I found it best to set the soup can right directly below what I'm writing. And I just put my hand to the right of it if I'm right handed or left if I'm left handed. And then we, Jessica and I tested this with a pen. It didn't work great, but hi, Hyde Park. So use a Sharpie or, you know, a bright dark marker so that you can write and share. And so this was a really easy hack. Uh, Got to give big props to Jessica for finding this idea. Um, so all I have is the two soup cans, and then I have one additional soup can on top to stabilize the camera. And I just set it right in front of my notebook here. And then I just use my Sharpie or a dark marker, and I start annotating. So that's it. Soup can hack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I will unpin that now. So that's it, Hyde Park. I mean, that's a quick run through of Google Meet. Um, the main thing that I do want to tell you, though, and remind you, Jessica, I do want to share with them about the exit remove button. Don't yeah. leave a kid behind in the classroom or a teacher behind in the building. Folks, this part is really important because um, if you leave a call, the students can remain on and continue to communicate and um, unsupervised. And so we don't <laughs> want that. Um, we want to make sure that when we leave a call, it's like we're leaving the building and we have all of our students leaving with us. So Rosemary's going to show you how to dismiss your students from the call. Yep. So you would just click over here on the people. And of course, you'd probably have a long queue of people. Rosemary, can you screen share real quick? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was. Here we go. All right. So if we were in a call with a group of people, First thing I'm going to dismiss is our soup can. <laughs> uh, so that's this one here, I believe. Oh, no, that's my presentation. No, that's my presentation. OK, this is actually easier when there's a lot of kids because I don't want to dismiss Jessica just yet. But you would just go next to that user, the drop down arrow, and you'd remove them. And they're out of the call. And so what you might be able to see is it hung up on my phone. And so that's going to do the same thing. I could remove Jessica and I could remove all uh, any adults or kids who are in the meeting. Um, even when you're meeting with another adult, you want to just go ahead and remove them first if you're the moderator, just to make sure that your call that you initiated is ended. So that's it. That's what I got for you, folks. Perfect. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. So I'll be sharing this link with Jessica and I'm sure she's going to make sure to get it out to you guys. If you have any questions, don't forget that the Learning Technologies team, that is my group, is on CPS Tech Talk on Schoology, and we have live office hours every day for two hours a day. There's a rotating schedule for that. Um, so if you want those hours, let us know. Um, anybody who meets with myself or anybody on my team, we can give you contact hours for your time. So as awesome as Jessica is, maybe we could give her a little bit of a break and throw some of that stuff over to me or, or Megan or Ashley or different people in my group. Um, but anything that you guys need, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for helping us out, Rosemary. I appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you guys too. All right. Keep being happy, guys. Happy Hyde Park. Reach out if you need anything. <laughs>